Hey, Maria, this is on back for chapter 25 in the States. I may be lame, but I would have taken up for you, sir. The wind whipped around Ferris and Lisa bodies as they walked to Lucky Seven convenience store, a few blocks from their apartment. Although Fur lived in the flies of development in her area, she was still in the hood, and a few females who hated her either as they moved down the block. Fur had enemies, many. And although she acted as if she didn't, she knew any normal act could lead into an unprepared battle if she was caught slipping. She could have driven her car, but one but one of Lisa Mill friends dug them both parking dug both them both parking spaces out of the snow and they knew if they moved their cars they would be taken by the time they got back. Ooh, me. They were only five minutes into their walk when a white BMW slowly pulled up. Redbone, the driver called out in their direction. Fur and Lisa looked at the late model BMW and were pleasantly surprised. The way they looked, Fur could keep time with either one of them. As the days passed, she was starting to get lonelier because Rainy didn't give her love. What she wanted was somebody to laugh and enjoy time with. The only question now were who was going to get the driver and if the passenger had a nice ride too. You gotta be more pacific, Lisa said to the man. We both red bones. My bad, the driver laughs. It's not often you see two fine ass friends together. We cousins for a lot, so even so that's even better. Damn, they family, he said, giving a passage passenger dab. Fur wanted the driver so she jumped in front of Lisa, preparing to speak up, preparing to spark a conversation. So the driver could see her fat ass. Girl, they are so fucking cute. She was geeking. If I knew it was going to be like this, I would suggest we walked to the store a long time ago. Which one you want? Lisa tried to look around for her and into the car. I'm not sure because you're blocking my view. I hope it's not on purpose. Fur detected a little tension in her voice. This wasn't the first time Lisa start, started acting differently. It seemed like everything changed between them after she was sick. And Lisa was along with her friends. Oh, sorry, girl. She moved out her room. I was just trying to tell you something, not block your game. I'm used to bagging niggas like that all the time, so it's not that big of a deal, Lisa said. But like, but like, but I like to take my time with shit. If you act too thirsty, they're going to try to fuck over you. Before Fur could make it known who she wanted, the patient said, "Damn, shorty, said shit." He was eyeing for Fur. He wasn't her. He wasn't her original pick, but he would have to do. Her only issue was Randy and running into someone who knew him. I'm trying to holler at you, sexy. The driver said to Lisa, and my man want to meet your cousin. How about the four of us get together and have a good time? Fur was already already walking towards the car before Lisa snatched her arm. What the fuck you doing? She snatched away from her. They call us over. What we waiting on? What the fuck is her problem? She heard the nigga call me just like I did. <clears throat> Girl, don't play yourself, Lisa shook her head. If them damn, if them niggas want to holler, let them come to us. She couldn't believe her was being so lame. I wish I could, I wish I would walk up to a fucking car to get some rap. She, she um, gritty. And you're not either. Not while you with me anyway. It's bad enough we talking to them while we standing outside. Fur was embarrassed that Lisa thought she was playing herself. Instead of walking to the car, she maintained her position. Even though she hoped they didn't pull off and say fuck it, being bedridden and sick for so long as a kid made her desperate to meet new people, which result in hot-ass moves. What y'all about to get into, the driver said, looking at Lisa, who appeared uninterested. Trying to take a ride with us or what? Not for nothing, cutie. But I can't hear shit you saying from a distance, Lisa said. If you're trying to holler at me and my friend, you got to get out the car. <clears throat> the driver laughed. Ain't no disrespect, Miss Lady. It's just cold out here, and we thought you'd be better off talking to us inside here. 
And I thought y'all were cousins. Why she say, why you, why she just, why she just say friend? We are cousins, fur interject. While Lisa shook her head in disgust. This cousin shit was ridiculous. Well, if you're game right, you won't be standing out here with us too. Too long, Lisa said. Lisa reminded her of Coconut and she took notes to be smoother with her game for future references. Now that she thought about it, walking up to them may have not been too much. May have been too much. They made a decision to leave the warmth of the car to holler at Fur and Lisa. They just hoped, hold on, they just hoped they got some pussy sometime that evening when it was all said and done. The driver approached Lisa and his friend approached Fur, who was so excited about his height and the natural smell of his body that she was moving around in place. Before even talking to him, she felt she hit the lottery. He looked rich just like Randy. There wasn't a, there wasn't a connection like when she was with Slade, but it would do. You got a man? He asked her, because if you do, you don't anymore. Glad I didn't wear that ring. Nah, I'm single, she ran. I used to deal with the granny from Southeast. You know him? Nah, his name don't sound familiar. Good. Well, I've been single for a while and could use some company. You got a girl? Lisa shook her head as, at, at the thirsty way Fur was acting. Now she wish she never agreed to allow her to tell people they were related. Let's just say I don't have any attachments. Whatever that meant, meant was good enough for Fur. She could see him hanging over at her house and cooking for him. And judging by the Rolex, Rolex on his arm, she could tell he had a little change in his pocket, too. What's your name, pretty lady? Fur Cotton. Cool ass name. Why do I think I heard that somewhere before? You probably have. My family grew up around these blocks. We got a rep, if you know what, what I'm saying. She was smiling so hard, both rolls of her teeth and her pink guns were showing. People know not to fuck with us around Southeast. Well, my name is Gary. He smiled as he put his arm around her waist and pulled her into his body as if they'd been to go for years. He was so close to her lips that it would look that it looked like he was going in for a kiss. If he did, Fur would have would, would have let him. What you doing tonight, Rez? Being with me or what? Fur was cheesing up in his face until she saw the man who and flooded her dreams every night rolled past in his truck. Slave wasn't driving his design a ride, but he sure made the one he had look official. Slave looked at looked her way and something about his special told her he wasn't feeling what he was seeing with his eyes. Suddenly she was blown. Suddenly she was blown thinking he wouldn't reach out again. Whether it was to approach her about the murder or to talk to her. She was still enslaved. She was still in Slade's world when Gurry turned her chin. <clears throat> Hold on, y'all. She was still in Slade's world when Gurry turned her chin so that she was looking into his eyes. You all right? You know that nigga or something? Shake a Slade out of her mind. She said, uh, no. I thought that was my cousin at first, but it was someone else. So what you doing tonight? He asked, uninterested in the innocent matter. I ain't doing nothing. We about to go to the store, buy some stuff to cook dinner. You going to cook for me? Gary asked, licking his lips. Lisa was eavesdropping so heavily she couldn't hear shit. Rock was spitting. The driver was mad he chose her since it was apparent that she wasn't as easy as her. I can cook for you, baby. What you like to eat? Before I tell you what I want for dinner, I want you to tell, I want you to tell me what you want to give me for dessert. Fur Grant, knowing what he meant, you can't handle my sweets, she replied as if she could fuck. You better stick to dinner, boy, before you get yourself in trouble. Oh, you that good? Gurry smirked. Fur was hot and horny, and within an hour she was positive that she would give him for the, hold up. She was positive that she would give him the assets granted to bang her back out. You talking a lot of shit for her, for, for her car. He, he rubbed his dick. I hope you can handle it. I can. She rubbed his thickness all while outside in the open. So when you coming over, if Randy rode past, he would snatch her face off. Shit, we ain't doing nothing now. We can come chill with y'all while you cook. 
I would love to see that sexy ass in there. Before he could finish his sentence, Lisa yanked her up so quickly her neck snapped. Moving her out of earshot out of the fellas, Lisa said, You want to go to 7 Eleven instead of Lucky 7? Fur frowned, not understanding her question. Nah, why you say that? I figured you want a big glump since you've been so thirsty. Fur frowned and snatched her arm away. I'm not thirsty, but I know what I want. She looked at Gurry. I figured we could have some fun since I've been in a bad mood for a couple of days. I mean, didn't you tell me earlier you wanted to wanted to meet some new niggas? Here we go. You don't see nothing wrong with, with picking a nigga off the streets and taking him home. And you don't see nothing wrong with taking Diamond D to your room at my party and fucking him. While you on your crib, Fur wanted to fuck Gurry so bad she was making herself look terrible. Lisa threw her hands in the air. Whatever you want, cousin. Do you? Good, and just so you know, I'm not going to take a lot of your grabbing my arm out in public anymore. Be careful, Lisa. You don't really know who I am or who I could be. I can snap if push. Fur dismissed Lisa. Fur dismissed everything Lisa was spitting back and walked over to her new friend to discuss their plans for the evening. <clears throat> Fur was trying to breathe as Gary dug in and out of her pussy roll. She hoped he liked her enough to stick around, but the way he was acting, she couldn't be sure. Sweat poured off his face and into her eyes, and oh, she thought about how cute he looked panting, panting heavily in her face. The bed rattled as if she was silly from the color purple and he was Mr. She focused on the light above her head and could, and tried to move her body to please him. But the only thing that moved were her shoulder blades. And if he were, if he were fucking them, he'd be straight. <sighs> Bitch, is you dead? He said out of nowhere. Looking into her face. He wiped the sweat off his brow. What happened to all that shit she was talking outside? Huh? What happened? His comment came out of, out of the left field. And she felt a piercing jolt. Jolt of unease in her stomach. For stars, you not moving right. It's like I'm fucking a corpse or something. He was straight giving her the business. And your pussy dry. What? You a dude or something? She didn't know how he wanted her to operate her hips. She didn't know how he wanted her to operate her hips. But she could certainly get her own pussy wet. Move for a second. I know what to do. He lift her up. He lift up and she took a glob of spit put it in her hand and slapped it over her pussy the way Randy would ask her to do sometimes. Then she laid on the bed with her legs wide open. Come on, you should be able to get into it now, she smiled. After seeing that mess, Gurry rose up and sat on the edge of the bed. He wasn't about to fuck Miss Spitty, Miss Spitty Puss. He didn't care how bad her body was. Can you at least suck dick? Since it's obvious you can't fuck. She was too afraid to say the wrong things so she nodded and stayed good. <clears throat> Get on your knees and open your mouth. Damn. <clears throat> Fur dropped and he and his stick and he stuffed his dick into her mouth. She moved her neck the way she thought he wanted and pretended to be enjoying it as she bobbled awkwardly from left to right. When she looked up at him, his brows were creased and he looked mad up there before. It was, as, it was as if he was growing more irritated with each look. Lick. Grabbing her cheeks, he said, Open your mouth wide, he demonstrated, like this. When he released, when he released her, she bobbed her head so ridiculously again that he was about to hit her on the top of her head, like the hungry, hungry hippo in a children's ball game. She thought things were cool until her teeth bit down on him and he pushed her off. Fur was overcome with embarrassment and immediately felt lightheaded. Standing up, holding his dick, he said, You did that shit on purpose. She shook her head, No, I didn't. I promise. Yes, you did. Gary grabbed his clothes and quickly got dressed. It was as if a bomb were about to explode and he only had 50 seconds to get out alive. Is everything cool? first sat on the bed and looked at him move around the room in a hurry did I do something wrong I tried to do the best I could maybe I can try again 
You bit down on my shit. Of course you did something wrong. He told her, put your shit on and go in the kitchen and cook. He told her as if he was, were an abusive husband. Because after what you did to me, the least you could do is make me something to eat. After this shit, I got to grab a drink from Riley's. He put his hat on and left. Fur got dressed and walked into the mirror. She couldn't find her panties and from where she stood, she looked around for them. This was the most mortifying thing she ever experienced in her life. Second, only to the day Brownie put shit in her face. In the beginning, when she first got with his own, he asked if he asked her if she ever had sex. He told her that something was wrong with the way she moved her body, and she never knew what he meant until that night. Standing in front of the mirror with a closed fist, she hit herself in the face once, and a second time, and a third time, until tears pulled out her eyes. She could only imagine what Gary was saying to his friend, or Lisa in the living room. Finding her panties on the floor next to a mirror, she noticed his dirty footprint in, in the seat of them. Mad at herself for even being bothered with him in the first place, she put them on at, as a form of punishment against herself. Picking up her cell, she doubt she decided to call her grandmother. Fur, Elise had just woken up and was trying to get herself together. Is everything okay? Fur started weeping. What's wrong? Talk to me. Her voice was heavy with concern. Are you hurt? Grandma, I know you're not a priest, but if I confess my sins to you and try to be a better person, she saw harder. Do you think God will forgive me so that people will like me more? Will like me more? <clears throat> God will always make things better when you trust in him. But you shouldn't worry about other people. But that's what I want for people to like me, she said seriously. Okay, Fur, I do believe when your soul is in order, all things will fall into place, including the people in your life. And no matter what you say to me tonight, your secret is safe with me. Fur bared her entire soul in the hope she could be friends again with her coconut, Rhonda, and even Lisa. The call lasted for 30 minutes as Fur told her grandmother about everything that she kept hidden. After dropping her murderous life on her grandmother, she pulled herself together and walked into the hallway. The moment she turned the corner, she heard two extra female voices in the living room. She saw Lisa and two girls sitting on the sofa in, in love seat. Gary and Ralph were also in the audience. They all seemed to be having a good conversation until she came into the room. Girl, come over here. I want you to meet my bitches, Lisa said, holding a martini. Fur walked over to them and picked up one of her puppies that was crawling at her ankles. This is Lady and this is Courtney. Hi, Fur, Lady smiled. Fur was confused. She just confessed her sins to her grandma, all of them, and this is how God replayed her. What's up, Courtney said flatly. Lady and Courtney gave each other sly looks before Iron Gurry, who, judging by his body language, was obviously feeling Lady. They were so close together that their knees were touching. How could he be in your and her pussy and the mouth? How could he be in her pussy and mouth a minute ago only to entertain another bitch a second later? She was going angry about a minute. Thinking of release and still trying to be a better person, Fur face produced a slight smile as she walked up to him and extended her hand. Lady accepted her gest gesture first, followed by Courtney whose handshake was weak. She only hoped that Gary didn't give them the wrong impression by saying they fuck. I thought you weren't talking to them anymore. First, that's about it, Lisa. So what are they doing here? She called us, Courtney said. Fur looked at Lisa. All that shit about being too stubborn called them was a, to call them was a lie, and Fur felt played. She didn't know that her behavior outside inspired Lisa to call her friends. She wanted to be around real bitches. Why? What's wrong? I guess nothing. Well, did you have fun, her? Lady asked, looking at Gurry and back at her. Gurry slipped their bill on the table and avoided eye, and avoided eye contact with her. Y'all was in it for a minute. Yeah, we were about to. Yeah, we were about to cook dinner. Courtney said, "Did you want a bite to eat?" She said louder. 
Everybody burst into laughter and she knew then that he told them they fucked and how poorly she performed. Well, come sit down, girl, Courtney said. I was just telling Lisa that I love your place. She looked, she lucky as shit she could be living here because a girlfriend of mine and was trying to get in here for two years now. Thank you for her wasn't feeling her vibe. You're welcome over here anytime you want. How did you get a place in this building, lady asked. Yeah, who who you had to fuck? Courtney looked at Gary or suck to move here. Fur was no longer feeling her energy and hoped Lisa would put them in check, but she didn't. What are y'all doing here for real, Fur brother? It's obvious you don't like me. And we're not here for you. We're here for Lisa. Courtney made a correction. But why the attitude? It ain't my fault Lisa told me about the reason y'all stopped hanging together. She posed. Me and Lisa are like family now. And I'm going to let y'all come in the way of that because you are jealous. They all looked at each other. Fur, what's wrong with you? Lisa questioned. They're just fucking with your head. Why are you tripping so hard? I knew that bitch was crazy, Gary said. Nigga, shut up, Roth interject, interjected, not wanting to be thrown out before you get some pussy. You already got put on. Yeah, right, he responded. She looked at everyone and said, I'm sorry. Maybe I, maybe I don't feel so good, so I'm being snappy. I was just wondering why they here. I mean, I thought y'all were decent, and the next thing I know, they're in my house. We always fight with this bitch. But we can't stay away from each other forever. That's real friendship, lady said. Everybody don't beef with their friends over who what, whose baby shower gift or who did hit and run, sporting the joke. Fern looked at Lisa. She couldn't believe she betrayed her this way. Why would you do that, Courtney? Lisa asked. Sorry for her. She raised the glass. I've been drinking. I hope y'all know that's me and Lisa, our cousin. So if you want to be in, in her life, I am too. Fur said. Courtney looked at Lisa who held her head down in shame. The cousin shit was cool when they were alone with her drinking in hand. But in front of her friends, it was embarrassing. And she couldn't understand why Fur didn't recognize it. She had zero sway. This your cousin now? Lady laughed, holding her stomach. Damn, y'all ain't been in here that long, have you? Yeah, Lisa, what you, what y'all going to be doing next? Eating and eating, eating each other pussies out? Courtney asked. Picture that shit, bitch. Lisa remarked, you always talking sideways. Everyone was laughing at her expense, expense, and she felt the room spin. Everything in her wanted to be both of their asses. She realized Elise was a liar. She didn't know anything about life because if she did, why would she be going through this? Things were even worse than she confessed. We're not real cousins, her and her brother. We just called each other that because we had so much in common. Whatever, Courtney said, waving her hand at the food. Anyway, Lisa, what you doing t tonight? You coming with us to party or what? A friend of mine owns a catering company in D.C. called EAT with his partners. Fur remember Coconut inviting her to that spot. At night, they rent it out for parties and shit like that. It's real fly, Lisa. You gotta see this shit. Anyway, Juice and his boys celebrate some business ventures, and they want us to come. Yeah, it's supposed to be like that, Lady Ada. Y'all not gonna hang out with us here, Roth said, looking at Lady. I was trying to get to know you better. How are you going to get to know me more when you have Lisa here? He wasn't with me, Lisa said. Fur put them in here. It don't matter if he didn't try to holler at you or not. I got a man, lady told him. Plus, you can't afford me, daddy. I will admit, you kind, you kind of cute, though. Gary... Irritated with all this shit, stood up and patted Roth on the shoulders. Let's roll, man. Ain't shit jumping off in this joint. I ain't ready to go, Roth said. You must be trying to get left, Gary sounded off. Fur thought his comment was funny, being that he was the pastor. Since we did ride in my car, so it was his car. Fur thought it didn't matter. Right now, all she wanted was both of them gone. Because they were both... Because they were constant reminders that she made a courage, courage judgment mistake by inviting them over. 
Woo. All right, man. All right, mom. I'm going to get up with you later. Cool. Ross said to Lisa, whatever. She brushed them off. When they left, first sat down on the recliner and said, so what time is the party? I got some real fly shit I want to wear. That still got the tags on it. My boyfriend's own bought it for me before he died when he fell out the window. When he fell out the window, Lady and Courtney gave her a puzzled look. We never went nowhere. We never went nowhere, so I, so I didn't have a chance to wear it. Maybe I should put it on tonight. Um, who said you were invited? Lady asked. Yeah, I don't remember giving you an invitation either, Courtney said seriously. Fur looked at both of them and then at Lisa. The room was silent for, for 40 seconds, and she waited for them to say they were joking. This reminded her of how she felt when she invited herself to Coconut Slumber Party. Are you serious? She asked. I really can't go? You lame for her, Courtney continued. Plus, we don't know you like that. So why would you think you could come just invite yourself to our shit? Fur put her puppy down and ran into the bedroom. With her bedroom door closed, she looked at herself in the mirror. You a dumb, ugly bitch. Look at you. Your lips are big. Your eyes are far apart. Nobody wants you around them. Look at you. You can't even talk in front of people. You're stupid. You're dumb. Spidey face fur. You always, you always want to be ugly. Picking up her brush off the dresser, she brushed it over her lips repeatedly until they were inflamed. When the tissue was broken, she set the, t the brush down and hit herself in the mouth over and over until blood splattered on the wooden dresser floor. Her mouth was so red she looked as if she drank blood. She was about to hit herself again when Lisa entered the room without asking. Fur, they just playing. She stopped herself mid-sentence when she saw blood everywhere. She rushed up to her and said, what happened? Fur covered her mouth nothing. I, I hit myself in the mouth with my brush by accident. She smiled, exposing her bloody teeth. I'm fine, really. How did you do that sh That with a brush? You should go to the hospital. After being in the hospital for the most of her life, going tonight was totally out the question. I said I'm fine. Now what do you want, Lisa? Fur grabbed a few tissues from the boss and opened her mouth and wiped them out. Go be with your friends since you don't want to be around me anymore. I may be lame, but I would have wouldn't I would have taken up for you if my friends talked to you like that. For sometimes you act like a kid and I don't like it. I thought you would be cooler when I moved in here. That's why I said you could be called me cousin. But you said that shit twenty times in front of other people and it's embarrassing. Especially when people know we're not related. She paused. But don't be so but don't be so serious. Now get dressed, you're going to eat a tea, too. Fur eyes wide and a smile spread across her face. Just like that, all was forgiven. For real? Yeah, I told him you my roommate and to not do you like that. She rubbed her head. So I did take up for you. Just make sure you look fly because the nigga they hang with got money and they don't fuck with busted bitches. Nah, I'm going to look real cute, trust me. When Lisa left, Fur looked through her closet. She already made a bad impression and didn't want to make another one by choosing the wrong gear. After moving hangers back and forth, she settled on a black cat suit by Chanel, along with her leopard Christian um, shoes to show her um, toned calves. After taking a shower and fixing her makeup properly, she realized she didn't have she didn't have her medicine, so she decided to drive her own car so she could make it stop and meet them at EAT later. When she walked into the living room to let them know, me and Cole were sitting on the couch with their luggage by their feet. Farrah, we home, Chloe saying. And that's it for today. And I will be back with chapter 26 tomorrow. Bye, Mariachi.